All right, so one thing that I forgot to do in the last video was I forgot to actually omit the ready event. So we'll just do that right over here. And the ready event doesn't really uh, pass in any parameters, or at least it shouldn't. I mean, you could if you want to. But then outside over here, we can do client on ready. And we can simply just go ahead and say console log bot has logged in. And now I can go ahead and just run the file. And now what's going to happen is just to walk through everything. You can see that we're listening to the WebSocket connection. And then we're going to uh, reference this module. We're going to call the function, which is for whichever event file it is. So for the ready event, it's going to call this function. And then it's going to emit the event. And then the end user is going to have to listen to the events that they want to handle. Okay, now we're actually going to get an error because it's trying to uh, read in a file that does not exist. So since we haven't implemented all of the files, we're actually just going to do a try catch over here because otherwise it's going to stop the entire program. So we're going to just handle that error. So that should fix it. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you guys how to call the REST API so we can actually do certain things. So for example, if we wanted our bot to send a message, to the user whenever they send a message we need to actually call the discord api the rest api not the discord gateway the discord api and we need to make an http post request so here's what we're gonna do first we're gonna go and create a model called message.ts like i said this library is inspired from Discord JS itself. And Discord JS is an object oriented based library as well as promise based. So object oriented itself is a really nice programming paradigm. And I highly recommend you guys uh, learn how object oriented programming works. But what we're going to do is we're going to also create a new file called message underscore create.ts. And we're just going to import the same thing in this file. And what we want to do is instead of doing all this stuff, we want to emit a message event. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to just leave it like this and let's just pass in payload.d. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and listen to this message event because we just omitted it. So again, like the same thing that you would do in Discord JS client on message. And then we're going to give message just for now. We're going to give it a type of any and let's just console log message dot content. And now let's run our code again. I'm going to go on my Discord server. So I'm going to send a message. Hello. Hello. My name is Anson. And let's say, for example, we were to do a command like that, you can see that it's being emitted and we're listening to the event right over here. And obviously, we don't want to just pass in payload.d though. What we want to do is we want to actually encapsulate all of this data because let me actually show you what payload.d is. So it's just like I said, the data from the Discord gateway. So let me just run this again. So see how over here we have all of this data. We don't want to just pass in the actual object literal. We want to actually encapsulate everything in its own message object. Now, however, I don't want to do that just yet. I want to show you guys the main point that I'm trying to make in this video and that's making an HTTP post request because in order for our bot to actually respond well normally you would have something like message dot channel dot send or something like message dot reply and what happens under the hood is that it's going to make an api call it's going to make a post request let me find the documentation so if you look at channel you're going to see that right over here if you want to create a message or if you want to send a message, you're, you're basically creating the message, okay? And it also says before using this endpoint, you must connect to and identify with the gateway at least once. So we need to make a post request to this endpoint. And you can see right over here, this curly brace channel.id, what this means is that this is the channel ID that you need to pass in as a route parameter. So, and there's also some things that we can pass into. So example request body, content, TTS, and you can also pass in uh, the embed as well, but we're gonna not do that for now. We're just gonna send a simple message. So let me move this to the other screen and we need the base url for the discord rest api so let me just grab that so it should just be this url let me go over to constants and i'm gonna put this right over here api and now just for demonstration purposes i'm going to show you how to make the actual api request in this index.ts file but in the later videos we're actually going to encapsulate everything inside its own uh file okay but just for this demonstration what we're going to do is we're going to use fetch so async uh, create message and we'll just call this message oh wait async function create message and this should also be a string and we're going to use fetch so const or fetch so in deno uh fetch is actually the api the browser ap is from the browser api so deno actually has browser support which is pretty cool so we don't have to use something like a node fetch we can just use fetch and what i want to do is i want to make an api call to this endpoint over here so let me just import constants and we're going to do constants dot api i'm going to define the data that we want to send so we're going to go ahead and do contents and that's just going to be content. 
and then TTS. We'll set it as false for now. We're hard coding it for now, but in later episodes, we're going to actually write our own class that's going to handle all the API calls. And now we're going to go ahead and do const response equals await fetch. And we're going to reference constants.api. And then we need to specify the endpoint, which is supposed to be channels. We need to specify the channel ID, which we're going to pass in from the uh, function call. And then slash messages. We're going to specify first, let's do this. The method should be post. The headers, we need to specify headers as well. We're going to go ahead and actually let me declare that outside over here. So const headers. So we're going to need two headers, two important ones. One of them is the content type. This is going to be application slash JSON. If we wanted to send a file, we would need to specify, I think, multi-part form data. Or if you send, I think, embed, there's like some documentation that talks about it too, so you guys can check it out. And we're also going to need authorization header, so authorization. And then bot client dot token. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pass in headers. And then the next thing we need to do is pass in body, but we need to stringify it. So let's do that. And now if we go ahead and let's just pump, let's just parse the response. So awaits response.json. And I'll explain in just a sec on what is going on. So let me just show you how this works. So let's run our code again. Allow net allow read index.ts. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say hello. And you can see that right over here, the event was emitted. Okay, but we actually didn't do anything because we need to call create message. So let me do this await create message. Let's pass in I am a bot and let's pass in the channel ID message dot channel underscore ID. And let me just restart the bot again. Okay, so I'm going to type hello. So right over here. Okay, see how it's spamming it? Okay, let's fix that real quick. See, we were getting we were getting rate limited. So I think the li our library itself, we need to actually set a rate limit because notice how it was sending everything ridiculously fast and it said you were being rate limited. So that's one thing that we're going to have to solve later on. For now, what I'll do is let me do this. I'm gonna go and write an if condition. So if message contents is equal to hello, let's just send this message back. Okay, so let's restart our bot. Hello, I am a bot. There we go. So that's how we can have our bot actually respond. We need to make an HTTP post request. The reason why it's a post request is because we are posting something. We're creating something. We're creating a resource. When you're creating a resource, you typically make a post request. That's just the standard. If you if you want to get a message, you make a get request. If you want to update a message, you need to make an, a put request. If you want to delete a message, you need to make a delete request. Okay, now obviously this is a hard coded way of doing it. Again, I just want to show you the simplest way on how to make the HTTP request. But in later videos, what we're going to do is we're going to write our own class that's going to wrap all of these API calls. So it's going to be more modular and we can just specify certain flags or certain parameters that we can use. Okay, but this is just a simple way to have your bot respond. So now I can literally make my own command. So for example, if I do hello, I can just say, for example, welcome to my server. And I can just exit this out. Whoops, just change it. So let's say we have our own command. Welcome to my server. So now we can basically create our own commands, which is pretty cool. So hopefully this video made sense. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.